Okay. Hey, Hypersurfacer. Thanks for you know showing me your question. I have uh, built this here in hopes that uh, I can clarify a little bit of what I said in my post earlier. Um, I'm looking here at, let's see, here's your initial post. And I looked at this, and when I first looked at it, what I saw that uh, bugged me was this right here this pinchy area here. I knew it was going to give you problems and basically what I wanted you to do is chop it off at this line and then you know chop these uh, the, you know the, uh, the actual steering wheel there and there so you could create these blends more easily and I would do all this stuff as simply as possible. Obviously these surfaces should all be very simple slabs and the, the thing that I saw that I figured um, was going to give you problems was this right here um, if you look closely at this image, you see that this line comes very close to tangent with this one. In fact, visually, they come together to a point right there. And that is a very common problem area for um, beginning and even some intermediate uh, level surfacers. They'll try to actually build straight to that point, and that will never work out well for you. Um, I don't care what cab package you're using, that's going to give you problems. Um, so what I try to do Let's look at this uh, a little bit closer. What I said was, well, okay, so build this surface and this one and this one and this big circular surface and these inside circular surfaces. Um, build those as simply as possible, probably using conics. Um, then we would build these little um, bridges in between um, and then we would build these yellow surfaces dead last. And what I, what I pointed out here was you should make sure that you come to a flat here where the primary meets this tertiary surface should be a flat surface rather than actually a point. So this curve here uh, you might be inclined to bring tangent with this line but that is suicide for your surface so I'm bringing it back out away a little bit. Um, and it can be a very small amount. You would, you would not even see it in the final uh, part, but it would make a big difference in terms of the cleanliness of your geometry. And the one thing that I did notice here um, as I drew, uh, as I worked with this, um, is that technically, okay, so, so these are your primaries, these are your secondaries in between here, and these are your, your tertiary surfaces that are built off of the secondaries. And um, so let's take a look at what you tried to do. Um, so in your next post, I'm seeing all kinds of stuff going on here, and my just red flags are going burr, burr. Um, First of all, we'll look at this guy. Um, <clears throat> it looks like you're trying to control this very uh, uh, tightly. I, I'm not. I, I'm not even sure I understand what exactly you're trying to do here. Um, but uh, it looks already a lot more complex than is necessary. I'm seeing a lot of uh, surface patches. I'm not sure why all of these are separate surfaces um, or separate colors anyway. Uh, so then I looked at your next image, which I think I have open already, and you asked if uh, to achieve uh, positional continuity by intersecting secondary surfaces. Is this method correct? No. I would build this curve first and then build these surfaces to it. And I'm going to show you that in a second. And then lastly here, this is the one where things are totally screwed up for you. And, and obviously, I mean, I, I, I think you're, you're going to have problems with this method, so I'm sorry to lead you astray earlier. Um, so uh, first of all, I see you're trying to make this tangent, which it's not. Right, These, this is actually a hard edge, so you should get rid of that tangent constraint. This should, these all three should be free position constraints or point con, point continuity constraints. Then this can be curvature. That's fine, but this can only be curvature if these curves here are curvature continuous. Um, so let's let's take a look at how I did it, and then see if you have any questions after that. So what I did was I'm, I'm actually using Katia because that's I'm just more comfortable there but you should be able to trans you know uh, translate all this stuff into into alias <coughs> as you can see here if we look really closely the uh, 
this surface here is the is the one we're looking at, and it's nice and smooth. Um, there's if we zebra stripe this or whatever, it's going to be dead on, dead on smooth. And if you look here, my tertiary surface comes to this flat here, um, and this is all one big patch surface, but it just happens to come to a flat here. And if I um, were to look at this surface, I defined it as I said it should be curvature continuous at this line. It should be you know free position continuous here free position here free position here because there's a all of those have sharp edges so you don't need tangent continuity on any of those but then you want curvature continuity here and curvature continuity there so there's only three curvature continuity constraints one here one at the end here and one at the end here so and then all of these other surfaces, every single thing, every single other surface here is a conic. Okay, that's, and I, you know, I don't know how well you can achieve that in, in Alias. I know in, in uh, Katia, Katia has some really nice conic uh, blend surfaces, conic uh, sweeps. And so every single other thing here is a nice, clean, beautiful conic that makes everybody happy. Um, and if we look over here at the way that I built it, you can see that I have my primaries here and here. This is just a revolved conic sweep. This is a, uh, a, a conic uh, stretched across here. In fact, if I just look at its uh, parent, see that it's actually a great big conic sweep right across there. These guys here, that's just a, another big conic sweep across there that I've trimmed off. Same thing up here, just another conic sweep. This here, conic sweep, conic sweep. And even here, so, and then when I got into this area, this is where things got fun, and this is what I want to show you. So I built a curve there, and I built a curve there. Built a curve there, and a curve there. So the first thing that I did was build this curve that is curvature continuous to either one of these edges. Then I built this curve, curvature continuous at either one of these. And over here, all I had done is I put a point where I wanted it to be, and I made a, uh, a plane, oops, an intersection here. So I made a point. Ugh, come here. So I made myself a little plane, I made a point, I intersected that plane with this conic, and then I used that line as my tangent constraint for this curve. Easy enough. Oop. And then, once I had those curves, then I could use this blend, this, this, uh, I could create this surface from here to there with tangent constraints here, and here, or curvature constraints, whichever you prefer. I have a tangent constraint with a draft surface here that you can't see. And then this is just free position uh, constraint up there. And so I did the exact same thing over here, where I made a, uh, this is curvature continuous, this is curvature continuous, this is tangent with a, uh, I made a uh, draft surface down there. Yeah. And then up here, I have a free position constraint up to this, this curve. Once I had that, I ended up with this, right? I ended up with a big blank area that I could just fill in. And this is where I'm not sure how, uh, I'm not sure how Alias is going to want you to deal with this. Uh, I'm not an Alias guy. You could ask Steve, um, the other... Class A surfacing guy here. He's much more into alias. Um, but uh, the way I was able to do it in, in Katia was to use a, a fill surface, a patch fill. And uh, patch fill surfaces in Katia used to be, or in any package, used to be pretty bad. But these days they're actually really nice. So I just used this, um, made it curvature continuous. I used this curve. I used this edge continuous, this curve. this edge continuous and this curve 
And then all I had to do is uh, hit go. And there I ended up with that.